start recording. Hopefully this will work. My computer is actually fairly good. So here we go. And I am going to take a look at the chat here, make sure that I've got everything gone. All right. So what we've got here is a new upgrade to my reason setup this is what i use basically to um make electronic dance music such as dubstep and um we also um make the uh the electro swing electro you know glitch hop anything that's electronic in nature most of it is done here uh in propeller head reason um, now in the past, um, in the recent past, I've kind of made a little bit of a switch to do um, electronic dance music in Reaper. And uh, part of that is due to some of the things that I got in another upgrade that I did. I actually got contact, well, I, I got uh, Native Instruments Complete, which is a, a crap ton of um, instruments and effects. I've barely scratched the surface and... But uh, 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 Propellerhead, they came out with this upgrade fairly quickly. Uh, if I remember right, the last upgrade they did to 9 happened last year in 2016. So this is actually a pretty quick update. And I wasn't going to, was not going to actually do the upgrade. Um, but um, they, I, I watched the videos on, a couple of these instruments that I decided on on the sole basis of these instruments here um, that they have added to the 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 repertoire here I'll show you there these are basically the reason instruments here and they've added quite a few but um, uh, most importantly for me these two synths right here seem to be worth the price of admission and I'm going to get into that, into this stream. But in, in any case, here um, here we have uh, an instance of Europa. This is one of the new synths. It looks very pretty. Uh, they used a lot of red and black, which I like. And uh, as you can see, if I've already been playing around with this. I basically did an, in, uh, an initialization patch and um, I basically uh, came up with a patch that involved all this stuff right here. I'll just kind of like play it for you. Okay, so as you can hear, it's basically kind of a sequence alarm thing. It's more, for me, it's more of an effect. Uh, and so um, it util utilizes all three of these uh, uh, waveforms and also it uses a spectral filter here on the the noise here that makes kind of the little rhythmic um, percussion thing that's in the background there the the main um, synth it, the, the main oscillator basically is uh, number one here and as you can see um, I'm using basically the um, the mod matrix here to basically modify some of the properties here to make things kind of more interesting, everything. Um, the second oscillator is a basic sine wave that I use kind of as a, uh, as a basis, you know, a, a kind of a, a lower frequency base for, for the patch. Although it's not playing all the time, if it were, you'd be having like a, a basically a constant like um, undertone or basically a drone or a, or a uh, pedal tone and stuff. But uh, what I did with that is I basically put this envelope here, which is basically the same envelope that modifies a couple of these uh, properties here. Um, and I basically put this and made it um, the modifier that controls the volume of this particular uh, oscillator. And so that's it. And then once I did that, um, I um, put uh, oscillator one and oscillator three through um, basically a unison effect here. And um, uh, the filter, I didn't really utilize the filter on this one, except for um, the, 
oscillator three which had basically the percussive noise effect i put through a uh, resonator filter on this spectral filter kind there's actually it's really weird there's two filters here you've got the spectral filter which is kind of in a, uh, as as they explained it in the the streams that i was basically watching to explain how this instrument works the spectral filter is not a filter per se but it's a modification to the algorithm that this uh, wave is basically put through and then the filter right here is basically your your natural your uh, your traditional filter where it actually modifies the outputs so once i did that i put it through um, some delay um, added a little bit of a reverb there and uh, some compression as well. I then um, uh, basically added a, a couple of third-party uh, equalizers. This one basically just, I haven't done much with this except for to cut out a little bit of the low end here. And then I also cut out a couple of the resonant frequencies um, that basically it makes it sound a little bit better and then I kind of modified the stereo imaging a little bit by not not my bunch basically what I did is I put the bass tones down to mono here and I added a FET compressor which is something that has really helped my mixes um, when basically producing music in the propeller head reason format so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get one of these. It's basically, here's a, another version of Europa. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset it and try to make something interesting for you guys. So sit back and relax and I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, so... In any case, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out, I'm going to actually bring up the sequencer real quick and paint a note. We're going to just basically move the um, this one over here to, to the second instance of Europa. And what I've got basically the, uh, the, uh, um, the navigator set for loop. Uh, on one and three. So what you've got is this. And unfortunately, I don't have a keyboard right now running things. So um, like in order to test things, I'll have to play things out like this. But um, hopefully that'll be interesting enough for you guys to basically keep along, um, keep going here. All right. So um, like I said, this is a wavetable synthesizer, and basically what it does is it um, has different values. It basically has different values programmed, um, uh, so you can actually like morph between waveforms, and, and there's a lot of different variation that you can play around with this. We have other instruments that does uh, do this sort of thing, and so... In some in, um, some areas, um, this might seem kind of redundant. Like for instance, right here we've got um, an expanse, and this is something I bought last year. Um, Epic Expanse is a wavetable synthesizer as well, and it's got some of the same features here, but it does it a little bit differently. So I figure that um, the more options that you have, the better. And this one obviously came out a lot um, a lot earlier than this guy right here so um, it was worth it to get the expanse because it's gone to it gone into a lot of my my electronic dance music since I bought it so I, I'm not going to put it down anytime soon it's just basically a, a different option for me at this point so we're going to delete that all right so what we have is a basic sign right now, and we can actually morph this uh, wavetable from a sign to triangle to a square wave right here. You can also go into a triangle. Well, that's a sawtooth right there. So it's sawtooth, and then you can morph into the square wave, and then you morph into a triangle, and then back to a, a sign. It's very basic. 
but you can also do um, different things. They have different versions of uh, basic waveforms here. This is saw to triangle, pulse width right here. And this is pretty um, basic as well. This is something you would get with like just a regular synthesizer as well. The interesting thing is they, they get a little bit more interesting at this point. So um, this is basically called game. It is very, I, I was playing around with it uh, an hour ago. And what it is, is you can actually make some very uh, chip tune -y type of sounds using this and basically modifying it. All right. So what what I can do is basically show you. So that's that's pretty harsh, but uh, as I can, as you modify that, right? So. so you can you can see that it's kind of like um, you you can see how it it basically morphs into this like very video gamey chip tuning sound. And it, the octaves actually shift as well because, it, as you can see, the waveform goes from basically uh, one waveform per um, revolution here to about eight there. So the 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 octaves change, the pitch changes like by uh, I think about four octaves there. And we'll apply it a modifier right there because this is where it really started to shine for me. All right, so we're uh, we'll do a wrap there. And um, maybe not that one, but uh, the the modifiers can actually do quite a bit with the other uh, waveforms. Um, one of the things that we can do, is we can utilize some of these envelopes here as you can see uh, they are envelopes meant for external control of these devices and you can do it by selecting these things right here in the mod matrix here what we're gonna do is we'll say we'll basically select the envelope number one from the mod matrix here we're going to put that right there so it basically can control the uh, shape here and then we'll add a little bit here just to kind of give you an idea of uh, about what's going on. And I don't, I, I don't usually use this part where um, it's basically oscillating between the uh, uh, frequencies here, but I, I can basically, uh, I can basically make it beat synced, and then also I can stop the loop. But um, you can, you can basically do that. So. So, so you can see that the um, envelope basically controls kind of the intensity or the position of where the shaper is because I basically um, routed it here on the mod matrix. All right, so uh, the other thing that we can do here is we can filter it out but let's let's go through like the waveforms here and just kind of give you an idea of what's going on here we can actually um, reset this for a key trigger so um, what happens is when you uh, trigger it by key it resets the position of this envelope all the way to the, to the left here so okay and we and we can uh, affect the uh, tempo here by quite a bit. So, and then you can be really ridiculous here, which is, you know, that's uh, not too bad of a sound there. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to, uh, what I can do is I can basically move this over here and, um, so you're going to see the the rack only and so i can play around with notes without having to play the uh, the sounds uh, through the uh the transporter yeah so even though like this kind of modifies it by quite a bit you can still get tones out of that and so um 
let's get rid of the modify here here and I don't think that that didn't really make much of a difference but it will once you get into other other um, waveforms here let's also move this over there so I can see you guys all right <clears throat> so see how this one sounds okay let's get rid of the modify here here and just and so it's a very um it's a very acid type of sound right here and um yeah let's bring the speed of this a little bit up um some other things that we can do here is we can set up a sustain as well uh, although it won't work with the loop so we can uh, set up the sustain there and what that does is that when you hit a note it'll um it'll it'll if it'll stop at this point in in the envelope basically and so um you don't hear it now but if you like basically go to the amp envelope here and and uh um like raise the release so it's a little bit longer than zero then you can see hear it now so you can hear it much better now where what happens is when you you uh trigger the envelope and the envelope gets to this point it will not release uh, the sound uh, or it will not progress through this envelope until you hit the release and then it, you will basically um, progress through the rest of the envelope all right so um let's see if the modifier works oh yeah there you go that that makes it a lot better so what you can see right there is that um, unlike the last waveform that we were playing with, the modifier actually kind of modifies uh, what you're seeing here on the wave here. So you turn it off right there, it's a very clean uh, waveform. But then the uh, modifier basically can um, modify uh, the waveform so it looks a lot dirtier and it's a lot more organic, so. <laughs> Sweet. All right. So, all right. So, um, the next phase here is the spectral filter, and it acts sort of like a real filter. Only instead of doing actual filtering, it modifies the algorithm of the waveform here. And this is supposed to mimic a regular uh, uh, low-pass filter here. You can actually select between a number of different filters. Um, you've got your basic low-pass 24-pole, a high-pass 24, a band-pass 12-pole, parametric, um, parametric EQs. I'm going to assume that's like your notch right there. So, yeah. <laughs> That's actually pretty nice. That's that's um that that will help you a lot in in basically filtering out a lot of like uh, resonant frequencies and sort of like that. So um uh oh. all right um. So anyways, you can actually add harmonics as well. Uh, so that that's a, a thing that you can further do with um, basically um, adding uh, more natural sound to the synthesizer that you're playing around with. You can get to a point where it sounds a lot like maybe like a vibraphone or, or something like that. This is your unison here. 
um, and essentially that is meant to help the stereo spread of your instrument. <laughs> I might actually save the setting. This is actually turning out really well. <laughs> Uh, all right. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to do that. Uh, this is going to... Can I save this? I can probably do a combinator. I'd rather save this, though. Um, Europa. What do I call this thing? Um, pad? A Europa Bells pad. I'm already coming up with songs the sounds that I like. And the reason I did this is because um, we can move on now and play around with the real filter section. And if we find stuff that we like, that's fine. But if not, we have that um, uh, initial patch that we can basically um, go back to if we don't like things. Or, you know, it saves something that is actually fairly good. You know what I mean? All right, so we can further modify this sound by basically put it, putting things through a filter here. So that's, you can basically play around with the filter here. Um, this is a low pass filter and basically you can basically utilize some drive there. Um, and, uh, there's also, you've got the, basically your, your notch filter, which kind of like mimics what this is, except this is an actual filter and instead of a, a modification of like algorithms and stuff. So, uh, I would say though, that if I did that, I would probably, here, here we go, let's. The drive kind of drives that um, the treble frequencies there. I don't know if you heard that, but the treble frequencies were a little bit painful when driven all the way up there. But you can actually add some resonance as well. All right. And yeah. So once again, this is basically the um, envelopes here. You can utilize that to basically modify these sections here. You also have an uh, LFO here that you can basically um, uh, also utilize to um, uh, like modify things as well, except for uh, an LFO instead of being a, tr a single trigger. And you can turn this these sections into basically LFOs too as well by um, activating your your loop here, and um, and also um, setting tempos up to match your frequencies over here. Um, I I tend not to like stray away from like uh, beat sync here because. Um, I I like to have things you know tempo synced and everything. It sounds a lot better. So let's let's do that. Let's basically change this right here to LFO one. And what we can actually do is kind of we can actually add kind of a really interesting thing where you have this initial burst of like modification here on the shaper, but then you can actually add just a little bit of like vibration, kind of like an actual uh, vibraphone as well. So what we can actually do is uh, we'll basically drag this over to the shaper as well. And we're going to get it just a little bit of like vibration, not much. You don't need much because um, this is basically going to be a very subtle effect. So uh, yeah, you can kind of hear it there. And um, you can hear, I'll do it halfway up there. Yeah.
That didn't sound as good, but that's because I hit some really gnarly notes here. As you can see, there's um, more than uh, one um, uh, envelope that you can play around with, and you've got basically three LFOs. So you you, you don't have to be like um, uh, limited to just like one modification here. Obviously, what I did was basically I combined envelope one here and LFO two here to kind of produce produce this really. I modified the bell tone to kind of uh, go further and create this really sci-fi sound here. Um, the other thing you have here is a basic, uh, these are like basic effects that um, have been really around f since the dawn of time, at least rock and roll. Uh, you've got a basic EQ here. This is a parametric EQ. Um, and uh, I don't foresee myself using this because you it's really limited to be quite honest. So if, if I really want to do some sort of modification here, I would basically add in like a third party a equalizer to do the job here. You've got some um, fairly standard um, uh, distortion here. Let's see what we can do with that. Sample and hold there, I guess. Uh, ring modulator. Right. Okay. And let's see. We also have uh, a delay module as well. We'll go ahead and go ahead and do that. As you can see, you've got basically a sync on and off. So you can basically sync your your echoes to um, the tempos that you are like, you know, some sort of uh, version of the tempo or multiple multiple of the tempo that you're running under on your song. Um, so obviously it's not going to show up here because we have basically a long cutoff here, but it does kind of like help to, um, it does help to basically um, thicken up the sound a little bit there. Um, let's see if that works. And you also have a basic compressor. Again, this is something that maybe I'll use, but um, much like the equalizer here, I feel like my options will be a m much uh, better of utilizing the FET compressor that I have. I already bought that thing, so... And supposedly it's the best, so why not? Obviously, you have a little bit of a reverb section as well that you can play around with. So you can get yourself into trouble really quick if you're not careful. But I do like that. I do like that. All right, so... I'll show you what I mean. Like you can actually go into your effects here and I've got quite a bit of stuff here. Um, this can be very, it can be very um, overwhelming to kind of navigate this way. So usually I know exactly um, which ones I like to use um, in my little um, uh, arsenal of, of effects here. Uh, the first one basically is I like to use um, a visual, uh, where is it? That's really interesting. Oh, wait, we're in the th instruments. Never mind. Okay, so we have like a graphic equalizer here that you can basically, and we didn't do that the right way. <laughs> Sorry. All right, let's do that again. <clears throat> so go into effects here. You can choose the synopsis. GQ7 graphic equalizer. And you can see that you've got basically a nice visual reference. Um, not really think something that you should basically rely on, but um, you can kind of get, given, get an idea of what you've got there. And 
as far as reverb goes, um, we've got a Rob Poppin effect that I've basically been uh, utilizing here. Although I'm not sure, you don't really need it. I'll basically do this for basically mixing glue here. Do a default vision to uh, vintage two and have the dry wet very low here. And then the icing on the cake basically is the graphic fed, well, not the graphic fed, hold on. The icing on the cake is the the FET compressor. And obviously it's not working right now because the the sound is so low. I hope you guys can actually hear the sounds that I'm making right there. Just play around with the ratios there. So, yeah. And there you go. You've got a pretty cool patch there. What we can do is actually, instead of just relying on uh, doing a patch on just Europa here, I'm going to basically combine the device so and then go file and save combinator patch as sci-fi let's actually change the folder here new experiments a lot of stuff here sci-fi sci-fi bells how about that that's pretty good sweet all right, um, all right, so, uh, some, uh, let's go ahead and choose the other instrument that we got here with this new upgrade and it's called the grain and it's a grain table, um, synthesizer. And this one is going to be a little bit more abstract than what we've got with Europa up here. Um, so as I understand it is basically what you can do with these grain table synthesizers is that you can take these samples of different things and you can basically make different instruments out of them via, uh, it takes, it, it takes waveforms out of the, the sample here and makes more organic sounds with them. So Let's just go ahead with the basic form here. Actually, what we'll do is reset the device, right? Uh, and we need to find this sound that we can actually um, utilize here. So let's actually go ahead and let's go ahead to our VST libraries here. We'll choose the sound and see if we can't do something with that. Um, let's go ahead and what do I want to do? Um, I've got a lot of stuff here. What we can do is go into Black Octopus. This is going to be very interesting because this is uh, uh, a few years ago. I used to use uh, Vila uh, samples a lot in in my uh, mixes here, and I kind of stopped. But uh, I don't think that was just because. It was bad or anything. I just I feel like I've utilized the potential of these samples by quite a bit. Don't know how long it's been. Hmm. All right, let's try the. The lights are low. All right. Well, let's throw something on here, and as you can see. Basically what I did is I basically dragged and dropped that sample into this little thing here. And you can basically just play it verbatim here. The lights are low, the and, low. And it plays it. And that's the most basic thing that you can do with a synthesizer. So like this basic mode right here is essentially this is the long grains mode, I believe. 
is what it is. And there's um, several different types of ways that you can process this right here. Um, obviously, you can do it this way, and this would basically mimic your your 80s um, uh, sampler synthesizer where yeah yeah so all right let's see what we can do with this then and uh that is let's see so this is this can actually um like it, also in the past i've done quite a bit of like uh, vocal chopping and i haven't actually done that um in the recent past and maybe i should but uh I, I you know this would actually help me out in basically doing a lot of different interesting things to kind of like bring that kind of like practice back um let's see so green oscillator okay so some of the things that we can do is we can modify the length and we're going to figure out how to do that now so we can basically modify the grain length because we can and the spacing as well hmm all right, so okay, here we go. This is much better. So what we can do is set. Okay, so what this is, the green is the start of the sample that you're going to play in the green at the table synthesizer, and then the red part is like the stop part. And we can modify the green leaf. Um, to a very small and may very long. Although in this part, I think I messed up there. Okay, so the green spacing, you can like basically modify that to kind of um, either get rid of the graininess or, or um, like put a lot into there. So we can go back into and, and change the green length all the way to like maybe nothing and if you put the grain spacing uh, too short it's a very harsh sound to it all right so um once again we have a uh, mod matrix here that you can basically kind of modify this to uh, basically shape the sounds and come up with different interesting things. So in uh, this one, we've got modify uh, envelope number one. We're just going to use a, a basic basic envelope one here, and you've got this uh, like basic rise here, and this is going to demonstrate some really cool things here. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to put it right there. I think we can do that. So the position. <laughs> and we're going to modify it by just a little bit here. And see. Okay. Okay. Um, and um, in order to make it not sound kind of like like you just modified somebody's talking, you got actually modify the speed of that, and maybe you can actually change the length of it so it's not changing so much. spacing a little bit and we can actually modify the position a little bit there
So you can hear that there's a little bit of formant there that uh, comes with the sample, obviously. But it's not like you're like playing like lyrics while doing this. Let's increase the position position amount by just a little bit there. Yeah. Um, one of the ways that you can actually modify this, you can actually modify this um, uh, envelope here by doing a bunch of different things. And we'll go ahead and just demonstrate that now. This is what I did in one of the uh, initial patches here. So you can basically go this way. Um, we're, we're just going to basically do a, a random pattern here just for the heck of it. Um, I want to kind of like show you the different things that you can do here. It takes a little bit of work. Um, one of the things that um, I utilize in in my songs is massive and they have these preset um, uh, waveforms that you can actually do. But this is fine. This, this is all right. All right. So um, I'm going to try and keep from not seeing the words on the sample and just like make it totally in indescribable from what uh is going on here so i think that work that'll work right and we're going to go ahead and play this again Very good, right? Yeah. So from Vila's voice, you can actually get some really gnarly, nasty tones for like dubstep or something like that, you know? Um, yeah. You can obviously modify the um, the uh, the octaves here, so you can go octave lowers without actually going down to like uh, really low octaves there. Um, <clears throat> there's another mode here I want to try here. So spectral grains. I'm trying to figure out what that is. Hmm. Interesting. Um. So obviously there is like a different thing going on here. So what we can do with the spectral gains, we'll just go ahead and utilize the snap to see. Ooh, okay, yeah. And filter it out as well. So you can get very robotic. Um, see FFT size here. Probably that's just more calculation. Okay. Um, yeah. So you, you can actually draw the curve here. It's just to see what's going on here and cut out different. Okay. So, so one of the things that you can do is you can actually cut out different frequencies here. So if you don't really want the base frequencies here, you can basically, this is essentially a, a thing that cuts out the bass frequencies there. So, whereas, like, okay, if you draw that back in, you um, get those bass frequencies back in, and you can kind of like also do the same thing if you just want bass frequencies and cut out the treble stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right, sweet. All right, um. Let's go ahead and initialize the patch. I want to see um, how, just how what we can actually do with other sounds here. So we're going to essentially reset that. Go ahead and go into our, our VST libraries here. You can get a sample of maybe something like uh, percussion or, or something. Um, final scratches. Okay, it's very harsh. You know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to turn this down a little bit so I'm not hurting you guys' ears. Sorry about that. 
Okay, we can try that. So again, we can play this out. All right. Um, one of the things that we can do is we can go into the tape and... Um, I want to see if we can actually do the same thing with this tape here. That's from a rec record scratch. That's pretty... What is this jitter here? Okay, never mind. Let's um, put the jitter down a little bit. Ooh, okay, so I like the jittery stuff right there. Um, yeah. So the, so the jitter basically kind of adds a little bit of... If you do it a, just a little bit, then you get this a lot, very harsh sound that, that you can u utilize for like basically leads and stuff like that. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and uh, let's just um, try the amplifier and see if this. Very, um, very sci-fi there. Let's go ahead and uh, change to a long grain here. So. You can add a lot of um, sound effects here, I guess, too. What I want to do is I want to basically kind of get as close as possible there. And um, let's reduce the grain length by quite a bit there. Okay. See the rate here, you can actually increase the rate as well. It's very organic. Unlike the Europa and a lot of the other synths, these grain uh, synthesizers are very organic in how they work. So, yeah. And it sounds a lot like um, like ring mo modulation almost. Like there's no actual tone to this. Oh, I can see that going. <laughs> I'm having a blast, by the way. This is actually really fun. Okay, so we can change it to a grain oscillator here. And this is where you get your tones back. Um, let's see. So we can get the uh, length here, see what happens. And your grain spacing as well. Let's try that again. Video game suspense zone or something like that, right? Um, let's change the octave by a little bit. There's a little bit of aliasing up there where the, you don't really get tones, but that's fine. Um, yeah. You can actually basically turn it in, into a pad too. I like it. I like it better as like a bell tone. So, all right. Um, yeah. I'm trying to see here because the Europa had its own um, uh, unison effect here, and I'm not seeing it. Like I'm seeing like the standard effect here, but I'm I'm gathering that most of the horsepower and this synthesizer basically is is the playing around with sounds here and the modification of um them. 
So uh, what we can actually do, we can actually fix that with like uh, third party effects, obviously. And I actually do have my own unison here. <laughs> I'm, I gotta say, I'm really liking it. Let's go ahead and add a stereo imager so I can see what's going on here. Go ahead and widen it out just a little bit here. Um, we're not going to play around with this because we already did that with Europa. It's the same deal. You've got these basic effects here that um, you can utilize if you want to however uh, sometimes you want to get a little bit more in depth here and you can you want to um, figure out what you can do here so what I usually do sometimes is I cut down the lows and that makes uh, room for the bass and also the kick as well so um, not really much needed here Obviously, with these sounds, like I, I guess I'm afraid to make a lot of noise here. Um, but you can fix that in post by basically driving out a, a little bit here. So, or what it sounds with a little bit of distortion there. Yeah, so that you can do that. Uh, what you can do, we can include this right here. And if you, if you guys don't like it, like I can also always bypass that. But um, this is a really neat um, distortion unit that you can use to basically um, add a lot of character and a lot of like grit and grime to your your mixes there. Um, See. Go ahead and add the effect compressor there as well. Drive it just a little bit there. Go ahead and drive it a little bit and decrease that. Let's go ahead and decrease the output by just a little bit. I don't know if we need this though. You know what? It's it, we may not need it. I'm not gonna lie. I actually don't. Try this here. Okay, there we go. So all, all the compressor does it kind of evens out the tone and makes it sound really good. All right. Yeah. In between that, we'll. This is one of those things where we actually, like, I don't want to play around with the reverb on that one. I'll just basically go ahead and get a Rob hopping and going and everything like that. Let's see, we'll do a default orbit to, orbit to see how that makes it sound. I'm playing some really gnarly notes here. Um, just to show you, I can actually utilize a third party echo effect as well. This is something that um, I've had for quite a while here to create echoes. connect that that's connected Oops. 
Okay, yeah. All right, so those are the two since I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine this and save it. So why not combine it, save it out and see, save as <laughs> Saifa, um, uh, gritty bells. I was creating bills today, apparently, but you can do a lot more with this stuff, obviously. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this little demonstration. I had a lot of fun, and hopefully I'll be able to use this stuff to make a lot of great music with and uh, sh share it with you guys. So have a great night, everybody, and I'll, I'll see you guys next time.